Okay, welcome back to the third part of the Godot top-down shooter pirate ship thingy tutorial. And in this one, we're going to be look at making the rotation feel a little bit more smooth. So what we're actually going to do here, we're going to delete these. And right key is pressed and left key is pressed. So with this one, we are going to, when the right key is pressed, I'll just have to go back and check our variable names here. So edit object variables, we've got max rotation speed, current rotation speed, and rotation acceleration. So let's go ahead and do this. So add action, we're gonna change the um, red chip variable, current rotation speed, we're going to, uh, if we're turning right, we're gonna to add to it. Okay, and we're gonna add in red, red ship, can't type redshift dot variable uh, rotation acceleration. Now, if you want to, if you named these something different, that's fine. I know mine are quite long, and um, if you're not great at spelling, it might be a bit difficult. Uh, you could just call it RA or rot excel, um, something that's that makes sense. Don't just call it X because uh, that would imply something else. That would imply a position. So your variable name should mean something. I've just called them straight out what they are. So change the variable current rotation speed of red ship equal to that. So add the rotation acceleration value to it. I'm going to copy that and pop it into there. Now in this section here, when we add to red ship and instant force, we're also going to add an action that's going to be red ship rotate and we're going to rotate it by uh, redship dot variable current rotation speed. Now, I feel like back here I made a mistake. Rotation accelerate, no current rotation speed. No, that's all good. Okay, now if we hit play, this, actually we made a mistake here, this should be subtract. Okay, or otherwise left and right will both go in the same way. So if we do this, we should be able to rotate left, rotate right, but there's currently no way to slow down. So our ship can um, do donuts in the spot, really, and we could just keep getting faster and faster and faster with that. So we need to put in another check over here. So when the right key is pressed, add a condition, and that condition is going to be red ship, variable of an object, current speed, is less than the max, uh, sorry, red ship dot variable um, max rotation speed. I think it's rotation max speed. We'll check it again in a sec, and this should be uh, current rotation speed. That should be max rotation speed. Okay, so what should happen here is, and I'm only gonna try it for when the right key is pressed. As long as it's less than the max rotation speed, it shouldn't rotate anymore. So it gets up to a certain speed, that seems like about right, it's not adding to it. Now it doesn't actually slow down, we're gonna add that in a minute. But we've gotta do the left key first. And this is where things get a little bit tricky because if we just say, greater than the maximum rotation speed, because remember with this one, we're subtracting the number from it. It's gonna get down to it. What we need to do is actually put a negative in front of this. Greater than the negative rotate max rotation speed. So the negative rotation max speed is gonna be negative 45. So positive, it's gonna be 45. Negative, it will be negative 45. And as long as it's greater than negative 45, and if you're not sure how that works, so we've got zero here, and then we've got 45 over here. And then down here, we've got negative 45. Everywhere here, all the way up to infinity that way, is greater than negative 45. And everywhere down here is less than negative 45. Uh, sorry, yeah, less than, uh, less than 45. So we're saying we want it to be greater than negative 45, and if that's the case, we'll subtract the value. So now I should be able to turn left and right. So it goes up to a maximum there. 
and I turn left and it goes up to a maximum there, but it doesn't slow down when I let go. So that's the last thing to add. We're gonna add in a condition, we'll add it in here. The order of these conditions does matter as what, well. mm, actually no, it may not. It did when I did it previously, but I've kind of changed things here to make it a little bit simpler. So add a condition, we're gonna say other keyboard, key pressed, left, invert condition. So when the left key is not pressed, and keyboard, and this might get a little bit tricky, right key is not pressed. Right now, these are both in the same thing. So when, we don't, when we're not holding anything down, um, we want to, so when we're not pushing left and when we're not pushing right, if we just said when the left key is not pressed, we're gonna make it slow down. Well, what happens if we're pressing the right key? The left key won't be pressed, but it will still slow down. So we've got to say when both left and right key are not being pushed. Then we're going to change the variable. Oh, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. And I'm not even sure we can do this because um, we need to check to see, uh, we need another check in here. So let's go ahead and add a condition. Now this is getting a little bit complex and I realize it's only the third video in, but this is about as complex as we're gonna get. If you can understand this, then a lot of game development, a lot of programming is gonna be pretty straightforward for you. Add in a condition, we're gonna add in a condition here. Uh, whoops, red ship, the, um, the variable, current speed, no, the variable current rotation speed, if it's less than zero, we wanna increase it. And then we're gonna duplicate this one. Uh, is there a way to duplicate a whole event? I don't think there is, which is kind of annoying. Oh, maybe there is. No, it just moved it. Um, okay, well, we'll just add another event below it. So add a sub event, and we'll bring it up here and we'll just copy and paste these. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. I'm gonna say greater than. If it's zero, it's all good, it's not turning, so that's fine. Um, then we're going to add an action. We're gonna change the variable current rotation speed. And we are going to, uh, in this case, if it's less than zero, we're going to add to it. And here, if it's greater than zero, we're going to subtract from it. This is when the keys aren't pressed. So let's have a look and see what happens. So I'm going, I let go, and you see the ship kind of still sails for a little bit. And it kind of feels pretty good. It's got this smooth movement that feels like a, like a ship sailing, and it doesn't suddenly turn. So we could do a whole lot of cool stuff with this. We could make it slow down even more by, same that we did with the uh, speed, divide these numbers by two. That'll make it, kind of turn um, a little bit slower. But you can still make it turn back the other way quite easily. And we've got this little pirate ship that can move around. Next video, we'll look at adding some cannonball effects. This is the whole code for the player at the moment. Um, it is fairly complex. Uh, if you've never done anything like this before, some of the logic here might not make too much sense to you. I encourage you to watch the video again. Take time to really understand what is going on. Ask me questions. Uh, if you're not in my class, you can ask questions in the comment below and I will respond to them. Um, sometimes I may make another video to clarify what it is that I'm doing. But I hope this has been helpful and in the next video, we'll look at firing cannons. We'll be firing them from the side of the ship. That is where cannons fire on a pirate ship. So if I look here and run it, if we are facing this way and we fire the left cannons, it's gonna fire out that side because that is the left side of the ship. If it's looking down, let's just turn it around. There we go, left side cannons will fire out that way, right side cannons will fire that way and everything will be good.